play 2 on ABC and today I've got that as a toilet for you guys. In today's tutorial we're going to be talking about recursion. I'm not going to be showing you how to do this in Java, but they can be applied to any other programming language. I used it in GameMaker a few weeks ago. So it can be a very useful concept anywhere. I'm going to be doing this tutorial in two parts. Part one I'm going to show you the basic use of it and part two I'm going to show you some cooler applications of the, of the technique and other places you can use it. So today we'll go through the basics of it. So um, I'll need to first uh, to show you how programs normally operate. You um, maybe have you have method x which you run, do some more program, do some more um, code, and then go to method y, some more code, and maybe method z, something like that. And um, this is you can achieve a lot with this, but basically it, is, it goes in one direction, sort of. You could say, and these will trigger out, trigger other things, but um, a recursion basically forms an infinite loop where you have a method, and the method's constantly calling itself. So that goes something like this. You have method x, and maybe you do four line, three lines of code in there, but then you call method x again. And then um, form a few more lines. Well, same, same few lines. This one, just you're repeating this outer circle, and you just go through infinitely like that. Alright, so that's how recursion operates, is inside the method you recall the method, and then you get this sort of method within method within method within method, within method idea. Now, this looks like it goes infinitely, and it can if you're not careful. You need to be very careful with recursion, because it's very easy to form an infinite loop and make your computer crash. But there is a way to make it work so that it will only go to a certain point. So, in this case, it goes one, two, three, four, five times within itself. And in order to make it do that, you need to have something inside the program to ensure that, to keep track of which one it's in. So, in this case, we're going to say we have method x with parameter n, and where n is uh, how many times you've called x, n is how many times you've called x. So. And here, maybe it's zero because you, well, well we can start with zero, so here will be zero, then one, two, three, four. So we can make four the maximum for it, okay? So the way you can make it look like an x, so you have x, n, you have your lines of code, and then you can put down an if statement. If n is less than four, then uh, recall x again using n plus 1. So that way I add one, add 1 to n every single time. So if you do the program in this style, it'll run through it exactly as many times. And that's the basic concept of it. That might be enough for you right now, but um, now we're going to move on to the tutorial, and I'm going to show you how you can use this in Java. See you guys there. Alright, let's get started. Today we're going to make a recursive program to calculate powers of 2. So we're going to create a method where we can calculate uh, to the power of 6, and we'll find that that is equal to 64, and 2 to the power of 3, which would be equal to 8, etc, etc. So, um, to do that, we're going to have our method, we're going to call, we're going to call 2pow, and it's going to have take one parameter, and that parameter is going to be what power we want. So, in this case, we're going to say 2 to the power of, let's say, 5, so 32. And then it's going to return the answer, so let's say system.out.print ln. Let's go ahead and print that out. Alright, now let's go ahead and get started on our method. So, public static. I have to make it static because I'm referencing it from a static context. If that's confusing to you, it is confusing. You don't have to understand that, but um, just make sure you understand the logic. That's the important part. Okay, and then int is going to be our return text because it's going to return an int. 2pow is method name, and then for the parameter, it's going to be in n. Okay, so um, int ans is going to be our variable that we're going to return. So return return ans, and then we're going to set ans equal to two times 2pow of n minus one. Okay, so just to make sure you understand this logic. Uh, so we want to know 2 to the 5th, so in order to find it we're saying 2 times 2 to the 4th. You know it's recursive because we're recalling the same method inside of it. 
and the reason why it's negative one because it's two times the previous. So uh, this two basically takes out that one. So if, in this case we have five, so it'll try and find two to the fifth by doing two times two to the fourth. That makes sense? All right. So I'm going to go and compile it. There's a problem with it right now, but I wanted to show you what the problem is. But that logic is is the basic basis of it. So we're gonna I just compiled it. I'm gonna go and run it. So it just went through an infinite loop. Didn't work. Eventually it stopped, which I didn't expect it to do. I thought I'd have to close the program, but oh well, I guess this works nicely. And it says nine. And you, you saw in the um, error message saying it's having a problem with nine. So that's because this is just repeating infinitely. And so in order to fix that, we're going to check something. So um, if n is equal to zero, two equal signs. Um, then we want to return one because two to the power of zero is one, and to go any further down than that would would be to just make it inaccurate because then we'd be multiplying by uh, fractions and that would just undo all our work. So we want to stop when n is equal to zero. So return. Oh, my bad. We're going to say a n s equal to one when we get to zero, and if n is not equal to zero, meaning we have still some ways to go, then we'll do this. So. We're able to stop the loop by by adding this part to it because n will keep decreasing, so eventually it'll reach zero. zero. So by having this, we're able to stop it, and then th this part is what will happen otherwise. Okay. Now open this again. I'm gonna go and compile it again. Yeah, see recursion dot Java. Okay, Java recursion, and give it the idea, which is right because. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Now let's try and think of another one. 8. I believe that's 256. So let's see if this works as well. Java C recursion. Java recursion. And give me 256. So um, this is a nice clean way of doing it. I think if you wanted to do this otherwise, you would have either had to have a loop or you would have had to have um, imported the math class and used the power function from there. Or power method, my bad. So, but this is just a nice, clean way of doing it. Now, you may may notice that, like I just said, that uh, loops would also be a good way of doing this. And to many of you, this pro that probably makes more sense. But, but recursion has some benefits that loops don't have. And I'm going to make another tutorial talking about some of those. So, if you want to, you can watch that. Otherwise, that's the end of this tutorial. I'll see you guys next time. I do an IPC.